I'm Mark Lehner, and I'm here at the Great Sphinx of Giza on behalf of Dr. Zahi Hawass, helping him out um, on drilling that we're doing underneath the Sphinx. In, in, in our first uh, hole here will be underneath the uh, Sphinx's uh, left paw. Perhaps the most visible example of an advanced civilization in Egyptian prehistory is at the Great Sphinx itself. Although the head was quite obviously recarved in dynastic times, the body and the man-made courtyard in which it sits show signs of heavy water weathering. ...surveys around the Great Sphinx of Egypt. They concluded as follows, the pattern of erosion on the Sphinx indicates that it was carved at the end of the last ice age, when heavy rains fell in the eastern Sahara, more than 12,000 years ago. This contrasts starkly with the orthodox Egyptological dating for the Sphinx of around 4,500 years. Kent Weeks is an Egyptologist, a Connecticut-based archaeologist who studies the culture and artifacts of ancient Egyptian civilization. He's a man who owns a comfortable home in a wooded part of Old Lyme, yet one senses this is but a stopping place to hang his hat, since long ago, Kent Weeks hung his heart in Egypt. Originally from Seattle, a lifelong love affair with the mysteries of Egypt was ignited within weeks from an early age. He recalls that he never cared about anything else. Reading about Egypt and archaeology was all Weeks was interested in doing from the age of seven. My parents didn't think it was dumb and my teachers encouraged it. I never outgrew it, says Weeks in one of his books regarding his incredible discovery within the Valley of Kings. After pursuing qualifications in the field, Dr. Weeks became aware of the need for a dependable and comprehensive mapping of the tombs and other numerous monuments in the Theban region. Weeks decided to create a project to survey and map the Theban West Bank and thus the Theban Mapping Project was created. In 1987, while following up clues from ancient texts, the reports of earlier explorers and the results of remote sensing surveys, the project examined an area to the northeast of the entrance to the tomb of Ramses IX, where he felt a long-neglected tomb might be located. Located a mere 70 meters from King Tut's initial resting place and totaling an incredible 121 chambers with connecting passageways, it is the largest and quite possibly oldest tomb ever discovered in Egypt. An immense underground system which lay forgotten for thousands of years. It has also been an incredibly expensive tomb to excavate. Considerable architectural supports have been required because of damage to the tombs, although we suspect this is due to the tunnel's immense age may be far older than we are led to believe. Additionally, several tons of very ancient flood debris from past flash flood events from Earth's very distant history has also required removal. Just how old are the tunnels Kent Weeks found in the Valley of Kings? The Great Sphinx displays similar scars from past submersion from seawater. Some conclude these ancient monuments may even predate the last ice age. Unfortunately, it had been looted on several occasions, leaving little in the way of precious artifacts strewn amongst the debris from the past deluge. The remains of numerous mummies, which have been discovered during archaeological works, are just a drop in the ocean regarding the treasures once buried in the chambers thousands of years ago. Finding such items within millennia of junk can be a painstaking and time-consuming task, something which continues to this day. In the spring of 1995, a team of Egyptologists entered a T-shaped extension of the tomb which goes to the east. The researchers were overwhelmed with the magnificence of the tomb. Although it was badly damaged, it remains a beautiful example of what we believe is original Egyptian art, the true constructors of the pyramid. The rock-cut image of the god Osiris still located in the tomb, protecting the burial chamber's occupants. Although mainstream archaeology, including Weeks, states the preservation of the human remains was very poor. We propose these mummies to be several thousands of years older than claimed. We believe this discovery to be an incredibly important and incredibly ancient one, proving that there was once indeed a great flood, a premise now held by countless individuals who have studied the facts of our history. As always, thanks for watching guys, take care. On the 25th of January, 2011, the streets of Cairo were being ravaged by a rioting population, demanding the end of President Hosni Mubarak's 30-year regime. 
While the world was distracted by the dramatic scenes of chaos upon the streets above, deep within the ancient dusty tunnels, a team of archaeologists led by Suzanne Bickel of the University of Basel in Switzerland was quietly making one of the most significant discoveries of the past century. They had initially found the top of a large round stone at the eastern end of the Valley of the Kings. The archaeologists suspected that it was just the top of an abandoned shaft. But before they could investigate, due to Egypt's political process regarding finds within the valley, they had to cover the stone rim with their own locked iron door, inform the Egyptian authorities, and apply for an official permit to excavate. A year later, after gaining approval to excavate, Bickel returned with a team of two dozen people including field director Elena Paula Goth of the University of Basel, Egyptian inspector Ali Rita, and local workmen. Each took turns lying on the ground, head pressed against the shaft wall, one arm through a small hole next to the capstone, snapping photographs. They left little doubt that it was indeed an ancient tomb. On top of the debris rested a dusty black coffin carved from sycamore wood and decorated with large, yellow hieroglyphs on its sides and top. Bickel has stated that she has never seen an Egyptian coffin in such a good condition before. The dating of fragments of pottery made from Nile silt and pieces of plaster, commonly used to seal tomb entrances in ancient times, together with the age of the other nearby sites, have indicated that the tomb could be more than 3,000 years old. The hieroglyphs describe the tomb's occupant as being named Nahimi's Bastet. Egyptologists currently believe she was a lady of the upper class and of Amun. People have been claiming there was nothing new left to find in the Valley of the Kings for almost as long as they have been digging there. The Venetian antiquarian Giovanni Belzoni believed he had emptied the last of the valley's tombs during his 1817 expedition, while Theodore Davis who excavated there a century later, came to a similar conclusion right before Tutankhamun's burial chamber was found. Fortunately, there is a growing number of people who are beginning to suspect that there is a wealth of discoveries still left to be made in the Valley of the Kings, the Nile Delta, and Egyptian as a whole. And thanks to discoveries such as these, interest in these existing mysteries grows by the day. It is interesting to see that in this period, even a wealthy girl was buried with quite simple things, Bickel says, comparing Nahim's Bastet's coffin and steel with the elaborate pottery, furniture, and food found in earlier tombs. Her wooden coffin was certainly quite expensive, she says, but nonetheless, it lacked the elaborate inner coffins found in similar burials. Is this the burial chamber of an extremely ancient queen? After reinforcing the coffin and securing the mummy, Bickel's team have transported across the Nile to Luxor, where a full investigation is currently being undertaken into the true identity of the mystery female. With substantial insight into the controversial finds within ancient Egypt, we personally suspect that often the tombs, which appear the most crudely designed, containing wooden sarcophagus, are generally found to be the most ancient Furthermore, their hieroglyphic writings were often far more exquisite in nature. Could this be the discovery of an original burial, and the crude hieroglyphic claim of the occupant's identity a fake, hiding the delta's true antiquity? A secret many fringe scientists have begun to believe is being protected by Egyptian antiquities. Many have come to suspect the Egyptians merely copied the original builders of the pyramids after taking occupation of their structures many years later. Supportive evidence for these claims comes in many forms. Erosion upon the pyramids, and especially the Sphinx, including over 100 underground chambers we are currently researching, discovered under Giza in 1995 by a team led by Kent Weeks, which also show strong evidence of several flash flooding events involving seawater throughout their long existence. The lack of any written detail pertaining to the construction of either monument in any hieroglyphs found in ancient Egypt, and so on. We find it incredibly intriguing that more was not made public regarding this amazing find, 
which leads us to suspect it may be a highly important, albeit highly controversial, discovery. We will continue to do research on Nahem's Bastet, and will endeavor to keep you all informed regarding any notable findings.